31, welcome to example five. We're gonna start doing some exponential modeling in this problem. And I'm gonna show you, for, for examples five, six, and seven, I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing these problems. So we're gonna do them by hand over here. And then I will flip to my computer and show you what I'm doing with all of this over here. These are just screenshots of what you'll eventually be doing. And you choose the way that you like better. If you like the way or you like the method where I do it by hand better, do that on your exam. If you like using your calculator and doing and doing it that method, that's great too. I'll, I'll want to see work either way, but you're more than welcome to either do it by hand or use technology. All right, so as I read through this problem, like always, let's think about what are the variables in this problem? What are some buzzwords that I can kind of latch on to? So we have a wolf population is growing exponentially. In 2011, 129 wolves were counted. By 2013, the population had reached 236 wolves. What two points can be used to derive an exponential equation modeling this situation? Write the equation representing the population n of wolves over time t. All right, so as we look at this, I, I have to figure out what are my two variables? What's my x and what's my y? Or really, for this case, what's my t and what's my n? And so I, I can hear the, the t value or the t variable. I see time, right? I've got two time values given. I've got the year 2011 and 2013. And I'm going to just set base, or excuse me, I'm going to set my base year to be 2011. So I'm going to rewrite this as when t is equal to zero. And time is always your independent variable. It's usually your x variable, but I was instructed in this problem to use the letter t. Okay. So I've got two time variables, or two time values, I should say. And I also see my other variable is this wolf population, right? I see 129 wolves and then 236 wolves. So taking a look at this, I can see that the wolves are growing, right? We have some kind of growth in their population. And one of the buzzwords here is it says they're growing exponentially, right? They're not growing linearly. They're not growing quadratically. They're growing exponentially. And we need to find a model for that situation. And when I say model, we're going to use that equation. I'm going to draw a little separator here. We want to use that equation that we saw in example four, where we're going to do a times b to the x. And I'll eventually swap out the letters um, with n and t, but this is your basic exponential model. Now, the reason I put a little separator here is because our initial question said what two points can be used to derive this ex um, exponential model. And the two points I see, they're 0, 129. And I also have, well, in 2013, t would be equal to 2. So I have year two and my population had grown to 236 wolves, okay? Now, these two ordered pairs, well actually I should say one of these ordered pairs is special. If you look here, this ordered pair, the way it was written, or the way I chose to write it because I set 2011 as my base year, I have my initial value. So 129 is my initial value. So at least for this example, and this is not always the case, but in this example, I was given the initial value. All right, I'm gonna put a little exclamation mark. All right, and this is not always the case. You won't always be given the y-intercept. And then, in fact, in the next problem, I won't give you the y-intercept, and then we'll see how we get the exponent exponential model that way. It's a little bit trickier when you're not given the y-intercept, but I was here. So at this point, I know I'm looking at f of x being equal to 129 times b to the x. The other thing I'm pretty confident on is that this b value is going to be greater than 1. I, I know it's got to be greater than 1 because we have exponential growth. And as we saw in example 4 when we were talking about China's population growth, we had a base of 1.006 and that base was distinctly larger than one. All right, so let's, let's plug this in. I've got another ordered pair. I've got two and 236. So if I plug in 236 for y, and I plug in two for x, you can see that the only letter left is b, so I can actually solve for my base. I'm gonna divide both sides by 129. 
So I will get b squared. Let me go grab my calculator. All right, but there we go. b squared is going to be equal to, we had 236 over 129. Looks like I'm at 1.829. And then I need to take the square root of that number. Now keep in mind when you take the square root of b squared the plus and minus shows up and you will have to decide do you want the positive square root or do you want the negative square root and if you remember from the setup in example four or I should say the equation that we were building off of in example four let me grab it okay or really example three excuse me when we were defining our exponential function b will be any positive real number so even though the plus and minus show up in the square root, we will always choose the positive square root. So let's see what the square root of that number is. And I opted to do answer here because I want to float these decimals as long as I can. I don't want to round my answers off until the very end because when we round our answers off, it can severely change our problem. So it looks like I have 1.353. So b would be equal to plus or minus 1.353, but again, I'm going to choose the positive root. All right, so as I start to work through this, I know my base, right? There's my base. There's my initial value of 129. So let me go write up this exponential model. I'm going to say n of t is equal to 129 times 1. 0.353 raised to the t power. All right, so there is my exponential model. All right, that is my answer to the second question, right? What two ordered pairs can I use? I had them there. All right, what was my exponential model? Right there. And I just want to unpack this 1.353 for a moment. Again, when we were doing example four, we talked about China's population growth. And remember that we had 1.006 here for the base because China was growing. It had a growth rate of about 0.6%. And we could get that decimal. If we take 0.6% and write it as a decimal, that is 0.006. And we added that to our equilibrium base of 1. And that's how we got this base of 1.006. So let's go back to the wolves and take a look at what's happening with the wolves and see if we can talk about that base in the same sense. If I took this base and I broke it down, this 1.353 could be equal to 1 plus 0.353. And if I were to take this decimal and write it as a percentage, I could write it as 35.3%. So that actually means the growth rate for the wolves is 35.3% per year. So that's a hugely fast growth rate. You're growing by 35% a year. In a couple of more years, these wolves are gonna be everywhere, all right? There's gonna be tons of wolves out there because they're growing so darn fast. This is savagely fast, all right? So again, for example five, we were given these two ordered pairs, but one of them was very specifically our initial value, and it made our work easier. All right, I'm gonna to flip to the computer right now and show you how you can do all of this on your calculator. And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna look at example six where I'm given two ordered pairs again, but I am not given the initial value. All right, so I'm gonna flip over to my computer, show you how to do some exponential regression, and I'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, welcome to the calculator version of example five. So we were looking at wolf populations and we had just found our exponential model by hand and I want to show you how you can have your calculator do that for you. We had done linear regression back in chapter four, and now that we have exponential models, your calculator has a built-in function for that. So let's take a look at what we want to do. We had those two ordered pairs of 0, 129, and 2, 136. So I want to go put that data into my list. And you can see on my calculator here, we have some model from whatever the last time we used our calculator in this class was. So I'm going to go to my y equals. Woo, was that fun. Let's clear all of that out. Man, we had a good time. 
All right, do I have anything else? Okay, that does it. I also see that I have plot one on. That's fine for right now, I can keep that on. But let me go into my lists, see what kind of data I had. So I need to clear that out. So I'm gonna go up into L1, where L1 itself has the black background. I'm gonna hit clear and enter. And then let me clear out L2 as well. And I don't have too many data values to put in. I have 0, 129, and then 2, 236. And I'm going to put my x values into L1 and my y values into L2. All right. Oops, let me hit Enter. There they are. OK, so I've got my data entered. I'm just going to clear out my key press history so you can see the, the newer parts of this. So I did data entry. All right. Actually, I guess we could look at our stat plot. It is ready to go. So I have a scatter plot selected. I've got L1 against L2. I hit zoom 9. And there's my two ordered pairs. And I'm going to try and fit an exponential model between it. OK? So here we go. Let me go back to my home screen, second mode. Let's hit stat. We'll go over to calc. Now we've done linear regression, quadratic, cubic, quartic. But if you keep scrolling down, and you have to scroll all the way down to zero. Wait for it. There it is. There's exponential regression. So let's opt for exponential regression. And then it's very much the same program as we did for linear and eventually quadratic and cubic. So I do L1, comma, L2, comma. And let me drop that into Y1. And then when I hit enter, et voila, right? There's that 129, my initial value, and there's my base of 1.353. We had found that by hand. I would argue it's easier to find it using exponential regression. If I take a look at my graph, you can see my linear model, not linear, oops, sorry, my exponential model going through that bump, those two ordered pairs. You can kind of see that curve in there showing that exponential growth. And there you go. That's how you can find your exponential model on your calculator. All right, so we're going to move on to example six, where instead of giving you an initial value like I did here with the y-intercept, I'm just going to give you two ordered pairs. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.